Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. December 12, 2020, the AML Law of 2020 edition. And we begin with that as our lead story, as Congress has approved the AML and a money laundering law of 2020. It was wrapped into the National Defense Authorization Act, and although there are uh, veto-proof majorities in both the House and Senate, it's going to be interesting to see if uh, President Trump vetoes this bill. The veto would have nothing to do with the AML part, but it would have uh, uh, because he wants to keep the Confederate-named bases, uh, military bases. So uh, it is a great move forward uh, in a fight against money laundering. It requires beneficial owners to be identified. It uh, creates a whistleblower program that we have um, detailed in uh, prior uh, Daily Compliance News uh, podcast. Uh, This is supported by national security officials, law enforcement, banks, human rights advocates, and really everyone in the compliance uh, community supports this. So Hopefully the bill will not be uh, vetoed by the president, but it is Trump. He is an idiot, and uh, he may well do so. Uh, next up, uh, as a uh, Texan and even a Houstonian, ExxonMobil has been one of the leading corporations uh, during my lifetime, but they're really at a turning point as the company has lost uh, literally billions in the past 10 years. In an article in the New York Times that asked, Is Exxon a survivor? The oil giant is at a crossroads. Uh, The company, uh, I think, has lost um, between $40 and $60 billion in value over the past 10 years. It uh, was delisted from the uh, 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 New York Stock Exchange Dow Jones Industrial Average and replaced by Salesforce, uh, obviously symbolizing a change in the baton from big oil to a tech-dominant industry. And uh, Exxon uh, really has not been able to make a change at all to the uh, new reality of uh, climate change. And unless they can figure a way to do so, they may well uh, be at the end of their run. Uh, Next up, um, from the Financial Times, the chief audit watchdog in Germany uh, turns out while he was overseeing uh, the investigation into Wirecard, uh, was investing in Wirecard. Obviously, a huge conflict of interest. The German economy minister, Peter Altemeyer, uh, called the admission a disconcerting and uh, clearly uh, something that uh, may cause uh, Rolf Bose, the senior uh, uh, who headed Opus, um, to lose his office. So a very... Um, Huge! You just can't believe that a regulator would be so stupid as to do something like that. But with all things Wirecard in Germany, really nothing is surprising. Our final story comes to us from Sports Illustrated, and uh, it is certainly an inspiring story of Utah State football players who voted not to play uh, their final game after the president of the university uh, made discriminatory remarks about the interim coach of the team because he was is of Polynesian descent and is a member of the Mormon church. The president uh, questioned whether uh, those disqualified him from uh, being the coach. I can't think of a more in, uh, disingenuous attack on a football coach than his religious background and his ethnic background. So kudos to the uh, university, uh, Utah State University football team going forward. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.